Good afternoon. Uh, you see, my, uh, my remarks are prepared. I think being prepared is the most important way to show respect. Uh, I've been waiting a, a very long time for this kind of meeting to occur. Uh, ever since uh, Barack Obama became the candidate for president, uh, many of his unquestioning supporters uh, have labeled critics like me as being conscious or unconscious allies, uh, first of Hillary Clinton and then of John McCain. It's a very uncomfortable position to be in. And as a result of those labels, Obama has been left free to gravitate as far to the right as he has felt convenient. And he has taken advantage, every advantage uh, of that freedom to move to the right. What we have wound up with is a president-elect whose cabinet to date is mostly a Clinton cabinet and worse than a Clinton cabinet. Obama's military portfolio is in the hands of a Reagan, Bush one, Bush two, warmongering criminal. His name is Robert Gates and his crimes go all the way back to Iran-Contra and the mining of the harbors of Nicaragua, way back to the 1980s. Obama's economic mechanisms will be in the hands of the very same robber baron bankers who set the stage for the current catastrophic meltdown back during Bill Clinton's presidency and in George Bush's presidency. Now, nobody forced Barack Obama to put together an administration that even the New York Times has described as center-right, and I think is much more right than center. Nobody forced Barack Obama to break into a sprint to endorse George Bush's bailout of the bankers. Nobody forced him to do that. Nobody forced Barack Obama to browbeat the Congressional Black Caucus into endorsing that same bailout the second time around. Nobody forced Barack Obama to elevate Susan Rice, a fanatical advocate of so-called humanitarian military intervention as UN ambassador. And she is a woman who wholeheartedly supports George Bush's war against Somalia a crime that the United Nations says has created the worst humanitarian crisis in Africa. And she and Barack Obama are both enthusiastic supporters of AFRICOM. We, we don't have to wait any longer uh, to discover what kind of president Barack Obama will be. His presidential appointments are his first presidential deeds. And by these deeds, we already know President Obama. <laughs> Barack Obama chose of his own free will to put his face at the head of an administration whose most powerful portfolios, those of war and the economy, in the hands of the worst thieves and warmongers that were available. Secretary of State designate Hillary Clinton looks like a comparative moderate compared to the most important portfolios in Barack Obama's cabinet. I maintain that this outcome was inevitable. This creation of a center-right government in the making was inevitable ever since black progressives failed to challenge Obama on any important political point during the primaries or before the primaries when it really would have made a difference. This blind faith, unquestioning Obamaism, is an abdication of all leadership responsibility. And it is this blind faith Obamaism that has allowed Obama to play 
to the right, to his heart's content. Barack Obama didn't face any organized black opposition to his call for an expanded military, his call for 100,000 additional soldiers and Marines, as if that would not inevitably lead to more wars and more suffering, and inevitably to a reduction in resources for human needs. If you all remember, back when the subprime meltdown effects were being felt in earnest, it was Barack Obama who refused to endorse a moratorium on foreclosures or a freeze on interest rates. He took a position to the right of Hillary Clinton and Edwards. But he didn't pay any penalty for taking that position because there was no organized black criticism. Meanwhile, those of us who warned that Obama was constantly drifting towards the right were labeled as traitors to the race. The Obamites demanded that everyone withhold judgment until after the election. And of course, by that time, it would be too late. And in fact, it has been too late for a very long time. The more judgment we withheld, the further to the right he became. But I'm not really angry at Barack Obama, because I recognize him as just another cynical center-right politician who's going to do whatever he can get away with. The people that I'm upset about are the people who let him get away with it for the last two years. People who amazingly see their job as protecting him. And that is really an amazing proposition, protecting Barack Obama. Barack Obama is president-elect of the United States. He has power. He is in bed with billionaire bankers and with war criminals. And people want to protect him when, in fact, we need protection from him. Now, all this, all this seems to be very difficult for some of our folks to understand because this entire Obama experience has been uh, damaging. It's one thing to get carried away uh, on the strength of, of pent-up aspirations over a uh, hundred years. Uh, it's another thing to willfully ignore reality. Uh, I was, doc, Dr., uh, Dr. Smith, uh, passed along to be a speech by uh, Amiri Baraka, which seems to explain uh, from his touchdown, touchstone uh, uh, how Barack Obama actually operates. What is the rationale here? And uh, Amiri explains uh, that Rahm Emanuel is a very good choice, uh, a brilliant choice uh, for Barack Obama and by extension for black folks as a whole because what he does is keep the real dangerous Zionists at bay, kind of like garlic, see? There's worse Zionists out there, and so he needs Rahm Emanuel. And I suppose that means that there are worse warmongers than Robert Gates, so he needs Robert Gates. And there are worse uh, uh, economic criminals than Robert Rubin and his boys at Treasury, so we need that. And by extension, Barack Obama can, can go ahead and recruit all of the worst in order to uh, keep at bay the even worser worst. If that is the kind of, of reasoning uh, that we have adopted, then we have truly been damaged by this Obama phenomenon, and we have a great deal to talk about while there is still time. Thank you.